But water's in a pretty good position right here. Let's see what, what it comes down to. Open and pro at once. Okay, this will determine the winner straight up. Oh my goodness, well they did it. Water. Well played. They, they actually pulled it off. That's insane. One of my most watched videos on the channel is my video essay about the way Splatfests are balanced, which I based on the results of the Splatfest premiere and the Gear Grub Fun Splatfest. I made a mathematical model predicting how much each team would score based on the point values earned for each outcome. Based on that model, my conclusion was that the team that's winning at halftime is much more likely to lose, because the scoring for tricolor turf wars seemed like it rewarded attackers more than defenders, meaning that the Splatfest Open category, the most valuable category in Splatfest scoring, is unlikely to be won by the defenders. And then this happened. They had to squish it so it would fit on screen. <laughs> According to my model, Team Water needs to win around three times as often to gain the same number of clout points as one of the other teams. Given that the teams are pretty much randomly chosen, the idea that out of millions of people who own this game, one team could have that 75% win rate by a random chance was unthinkable. Magnus Carlsen, best chess player on earth for coming up on a decade now, has a 63.49% win rate, according to the chess365.com database. The highest win rate a League of Legends champion has ever reached was only 65% over a month, maybe at most 72% before a needed balance hotfix. The highest regular season win rate in Major League Baseball is only 57%, and while that spans all of baseball history, that's still under 19,000 games. More than that were played during this Splatfest. Team Water is not Magnus Carlsen or Juggernaut Rework Skarner or the New York Yankees. Not only that, but I even left out some extra points that attacking team players can get by attempting to cap the Ultra Signal, points that they get even if they fail to actually cap it. Factoring those points in would only have made it more unlikely for the defending team to win. It seemed hopeless. I figured that the balance of the Splatfest must have changed to allow this to happen. Having discussed this on stream, a viewer challenged that assumption. This viewer, Drumstep, made their own model of expected clout from Tricolor Turf Wars, because while they believe my math was correct based on the assumptions I made, they disagree with the assumptions I made. They shared this spreadsheet with me, which contains their own model. You can see here that while the attacking teams are still projected to earn a bit more clout from Tricolor matches, it's not nearly as skewed as my model projects. The big difference is that, where I assume it's equally likely for any of the three teams to win, Drumstep believes it's more likely for the defenders to win, because they have more players. Remember, Tricolor Turf War is an asymmetric game mode. The two kinds of team are not the same. Drumstep adjusts the likelihood of winning based on how many players there are. So, defenders have a 50% chance to win, and each attacking team has a 25% chance to win by default. They consider a Sprinkler of Doom, the reward for capping the Ultra Signal, as an extra player for the team that captures it, meaning that now, instead of having 2 out of the 8 players in the game, an attacking team can have 3 out of the 9, or 4 out of the 10 players in the game. Does this reflect my experience of playing the game? Not really. I played four Tricolor Turf War matches this Splatfest as the attacking team and won three of them. But that doesn't mean anything. I see a lot of people posting on Twitter or in Twitch chat about how Team Water is so sweaty or Team Gear is so toxic or man, Team Fire is going to lose. Look at how badly they played in this match. And it's silly to me. Your individual experience of the game is so quantitatively small that you cannot possibly determine real statistically significant patterns. Millions of people played this game over the last 48 hours. 
In the time it took for your shortest game to finish, there were maybe hundreds or thousands more games that other people played at exactly the same time. You simply have not experienced enough of the Splatfest to have really seen any identifiable patterns in this global, international event. No one has. I'm also not a representative player. I've got thousands of hours in the Splatoon series. I may not be a tip-top level player, but I know enough about the game to be able to teach the vast majority of players how to play it better. And I did hit the top 100 for Team Fire in Splatfest Pro. I should be expected to win more often than I lose regardless of the odds. The average Splatoon player who played ranked modes in Splatoon 2 landed somewhere in B rank. Someone who's at a Splatoon 2 B rank level isn't looking at the game as carefully as I am and looking at spreadsheets thinking about how Splatfests are balanced. Even if top players were to lab this mode out and determine that at top level the game is skewed toward one side, what will actually determine who wins or loses the Splatfest is not how the game works at top level, but how it works at the equivalent of Splatoon 2's B rank. So while I thought the game mode felt, if anything, attacking team favored, my experience is hardly useful evidence for arguing that. So maybe my personal experience was insufficient, and Tricolor Turf War is actually pretty closely balanced, and that the defending team wins more than my experience tells me it does. Maybe the rewards for each team are balanced a lot more carefully than I thought they were, because since the defending team wins more, the attacking team actually does need all of those advantages just to be able to catch up. The model explains Team Water winning a lot better than mine does. What do you think?